So we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. Let's look at it. The spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4, 13. Can you please read? 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Amen. Amen. So faith is a spirit. All right, look at it. It says, we having what? The same spirit of faith. Amen? Amen. I probably have never thought about it that way. But faith is a spirit. There's a spirit of faith. Just like there's a spirit of unbelief. All right. Help me out. Just help me out. Just make, uh, make it easy. L let's look for synonyms of, uh, of fear. You know, or words that you know that relate to fear for the subject we're looking at. Faith, what would be the opposite of faith? Unbelief, right? So the opposite of faith is unbelief. Okay, let's look for words that are similar to unbelief, right? Synonyms of unbelief or connected to unbelief. Unbelief, you could say doubt, right? You can say doubt, yes? And I could even put fear in in that context then there's unbelief there's doubt you know worry worry anxiety you know fear right okay so i just went there to make this point that faith is a spirit because the opposite of faith is also very often a spirit that is at work fear is a spirit That's right. In 2 Timothy, we are told in chapter 1 and verse 7 that God has not given us a spirit of fear. So fear is a spirit. Somebody can be immobilized by fear. Just, just they're petrified and they can't move. Fear. They cannot move physically. Sometimes mentally, they just freeze. They can't think. You know, as the spirit of fear can see somebody that they become afraid to launch out to start a business, to launch out to, even, even if they are married, to start a family. They're, they're, I don't know if you've ever heard this. Pastors, we hear all kinds of things. But some people who say they are afraid to bring children into the world because of all the troubles in the world. I mean, we all know there's trouble in the world, but people live. People get married, people have children, people live their lives. But there are some who take this to the extreme. Yeah, see, that, when that's happening, that person, and they believe this strongly, and they live by that philosophy. It's a spirit of fear. They, they may not realize that it's a spirit of fear. There are even some people, even with marriage, there's some people who are afraid they, they can date somebody and be together with somebody for years, but they're afraid that the moment they marry, they'll divorce. So they don't get married. Oh, there are people who say that. And they believe it. But they don't realize that it is fear. Because according to the Bible, marriage is honorable. God designed it. God will not give us something that's bad. Every good gift comes from God. So if God has blessed humanity with something good, and we are afraid to enter, it is not God who is stopping us. It's something. It is a personality. It's an entity called a spirit. In the Bible, call it as, we call, they are called demons. And the people out there in the world may not be aware of it or think about it, but these are actually entities. They are spiritual entities, spiritual personalities that want to stop you from entering into your promised land, entering a blessing, a place of blessing that God has ordained for you. Amen. For example, we may not get into that verse today. We may or may not, depend on the time. But I'll do a series. So if we don't get into it today, we'll look at it next week. But I'll give you the reference at least today. If you remember, God gave to the people of Israel what he God described as a land flowing with 
milk and honey. This is what God said. So God will never give you anything that's bad. Now, when the people are going to enter the land, they sent out spies to spy out the land to see, you know, what it's like and all that. Twelve spies. Ten out of the twelve returned with what the Bible called an evil report. Not just bad. Evil. Now, evil is a, it's a spirit of the, it's a spirit of the devil at work. Yeah. So it was the devil trying to stop them from entering their promised land. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Two out of the 12, so they will be the minority. Mm -hmm. They said, God is with us. Yes. yes, there are giants in the land. We saw them. But our God is bigger than the giants. Yeah. And he's going to help us. And we're going to possess this land. Mm -hmm. Amen. And in order not to, not, not for the unbelief, the fear, you gave me a number of words. Uh, anxiety, worry, fear, doubt. In order not for it to build up, the two said, let's go right now. Mm -hmm. Because if we sit around waiting, fear will build up. The people will be affected by fear. Mm -hmm. And they'll never enter. So Joshua and Caleb said, let's go at once and possess the land. But the nation decided to agree with the majority, the ten, instead of the two. And the nation started complaining. You know, the nat national life or the spirit of a country can be influenced by just one person, by a leader. You know, history tells us, for example, that Hitler, one person, influenced an entire country. Obviously, there were people who disagreed with his spirit and his ways in that country. But unfortunately, he was their leader at the time. And he had henchmen around him to help him. One person. One person could actually make a difference, positively or negatively. It's often said that people go with the majority. The majority may be right, but they may also be wrong. Mm -hmm. But somehow, there's a natural tendency for humans to go with the majority. Because, well, we were like, well, they all can't be wrong. But they can all be wrong. <laughs> so you got to live your life this way. What does God say? Whatever God says, that's what I go with. Whether the minority accept it. The majority accept. It makes no difference to me, the numbers. As long as God says it, I'm going to go with that. Amen. Amen. So we've seen today, fear is a spirit, but faith is also a spirit. Please surround yourself, especially going into this year, surround yourselves with people who are positive. Amen. Whose spirit is positive? Who speak gracious words, encouraging words, inspirational, motivational words, not unbelief. Amen. Move away. Today they talk about the haters. Move away from the haters. Amen. Change your company. Praise the Lord. Because whatever company you're part of can affect you. The ten spies spoke the unbelief. The entire nation believed them against the two, Joshua and Caleb. Mm -hmm. And they began to murmur and complain and to say that they were not able to enter the land. And what happened? They did not enter the land. Mm -hmm. What they said is what happened. It's amazing. God was their God. Almighty God was on their side. He had given them a land, but they could not enter in. So it's possible for somebody to lose a blessing that God gave them because they themselves are opposing it. They're speaking against it. The spirit of faith, therefore, operates this way. What you believe, you speak. The word of God which you believe, that's what you speak. The operation of the spirit of faith is not complete until you speak what you believe. Amen. Let's look at the scripture again and you see it for yourself. And I'll give you another scripture to support it. So 2 Corinthians 4, 
Verse 13, yes. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Amen. Okay, so look at how he splits it up for us. We believe, and therefore speak. We believe, and so we speak. Therefore, you can replace that word with, and so we believe, therefore we speak. Or we believe, and so we speak. Right? So the believing is not enough. It must be coupled with what? The spoken word. Speaking the word. You have to say it from your heart. Praise the Lord. There are some Christians who were taught that Maybe like it's arrogant to be saying these things. No, 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 no. If you speak positively what God says, it is right to do that. In fact, the spirit of faith operates this way. What you believe, you speak. We cannot see the spirit of faith at work until what is believed is spoken. Should I repeat that? You cannot see the spirit of faith in operation until what is believed has been what? Spoken. Amen. I know we've read a number of times. We're going to read it again. We have in the same spirit of faith. So you can have the same spirit of faith as God himself. Be imitators, therefore, of your father. Let's imitate our father. Amen. You ever seen children do that? They wear daddy's shoes. Either boys, your boy, your sons, you know, little boys, they wear daddy's shoes, wear his shirt, and they're looking so goofy in it. And they are bent, but they are very happy. Yeah. You know, encourage them. Don't yell at them. Take it. No, leave them alone. Let them have fun. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Let's walk in our daddy's shoes. Yeah. We have having the same spirit of faith. According as it is written, God is what is written. I believed, and therefore have I spoken. You see that? I've spoken because I believed. I believed, therefore have I spoken. Then it says, we also believe and therefore speak. Before we move away, let me show you how many per persons or groups are in that one verse. First of all, it is written, who wrote it? God. So it's referring to God's word. Are you, are you with me? Yes. We have in the same spirit of faith, according to us, it is written. Whenever the Bible says it is written, it's referring to God's word, what God said, right? Yes. Like Jesus was tempted by the devil. What did Jesus say? It is written. Yes. He was referring to God's word. Okay, so the it is written part, or what has been spoken, that part is referring to God. All right? So God himself believes in something and speaks it. Amen. Amen. God wanted to create the world. God spoke it. Let there be light, light be. And whatever he had designed, he spoke that. Amen. Amen. All right. So we look, we find the same word that God has spoken, and we also do what? We believe and we speak. So God spoke what he believed. Amen. What he intended, what he wanted, he spoke it. Then David, the second person in there, or personality in there, is David. David believed God's word, and David spoke. Amen. We'll get into it next week. But go home and read, for example, how David believed that he, David, would overcome Goliath, the giant. At that time, David was just a mere, he's a boy, shepherd boy. And he comes to the battlefield to bring food to his brothers who were in the, in the army. The Philistines and the Israelites are set in battle. For 40 days, What's his name? Goliath keeps coming every day.
telling them, you're chicken, 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 you're cowards, you know. I'm going to defeat you, I'm going to do all this to you. Goliath there represents the devil. And the devil can harass your mind, telling you all these negative things. I'm going to do this to you, or this is going to happen on your job. There is retrenchment, there, you know, and it's going to affect you. It just keeps bringing fear. Because when you are afraid, what you are afraid of, when it graduates, you get a diploma. When people go to school and they graduate, they get a diploma, don't they? You get a degree. Yes? The thing that you are afraid of the most will come. That's why God hasn't given us a spirit of fear. But he has given us a spirit of love. So love has, is a spirit. Just like the opposite, hatred is a spirit. It's given us a, a spirit of love, a spirit of power, and a spirit of what? A sound mind. Amen. May your lives be filled with the presence of God. May God's power infuse your life. And as you go into this new year, may God's spirit of faith be activated always in your life to open doors for you. And may you enter these doors in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are well able, like David, to enter your promised land. You are well able to overcome the giants, the Goliath in your life. But you have to know this. You are a child of God. You are in a covenant relationship with God. So you be like David. Whatever battle you're facing, you tell that Goliath. So the Goliath will be that big problem, whatever it is. Yes. You say, Goliath, you're coming against me with whatever it is. Let's say the Goliath is your team lead. Mm -hmm. Or your manager was harassing mm -hmm. you at this time. See, the devil will not show up and say, I'm the devil, I'm coming for your job. I'm the devil, I'm coming for your life, your health, or your marriage, or whatever. No, he works through circumstances and people and he's working, and people don't realize that there are spiritual forces behind mm. these problems and impediments mm. and attacks. People don't often realize this. But as I'm teaching you today, faith is a spirit. Yes. Just like fear is a spirit. Yes. And the devil can send that spirit of fear through some team lead to intimidate you. Don't be, aren't people sometimes intimidating at work? threaten you okay it can be a spirit that is operated through that person and you have to take authority over that spirit and rebuke it in jesus name when david encountered goliath he said to him you're coming against me with these natural weapons but i'm coming against you in the name of the lord god of hosts you see that so the name that you call on is jesus you don't come against them in your power. You come against them in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And you pray against that spirit that is operating through that Goliath. Mm -hmm. That manager, that team lead, that colleague, whatever. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. A diagnosis, bad diagnosis from a doctor. Look at that as a Goliath. Mm -hmm. And tell that Goliath in Jesus' name, mm -hmm. I approach you. Because the Bible says it is written, by his stripes I am healed. Amen. I believe that, therefore I speak. Amen. Do you see how Amen. it works? Yes. Amen. Don't just think it, you have to speak it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's take another. So, okay, so we see God is the first personality in that verse, 2 Corinthians 4.13. David was the next person. And then you. We also believe, therefore we also speak. Amen. David said, I will live and not die. He believed that, so he spoke it. So when there's a negative report from a doctor that you're ministering to your friend at work about, let them say the same thing, David. Show them the scripture. When David was threatened, Saul said, I'm going to kill you. David said, I will live and not die. So when there's a sickness report, you have to say the same thing. I will live and not die. Because, because by his stripes, I am healed. I think you get this. Amen. All right. Now, let's go to Hebrews 13. 
Hebrews 13. Praise the Lord. Verses 5 and 6. Hebrews 13, verses 5 and 6. Brother George, can you uh, do us the honors and read that for us? Hebrews 13. Uh, let me make sure that I got it right. Uh, yeah, yeah, 5 and 6. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Amen. All right, verse 6. So that ye may boldly say, So that, that we, yeah. We may boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will, I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Amen. All right. Now, let's analyze this scripture. All right. Look at the way, the structure of the scripture in, in the context of the message today, the spirit of faith. Right? How does the spirit of faith operate? We believe and therefore we speak. Everybody got that? Amen. Now, look at this. Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. Let your conversation, your, your way of life, be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, who has said? God has said. As it is written, I believe, therefore I speak. Okay. God has said. What did God say? I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Watch this. For he has said, now skip to verse 6, so that we may boldly say. Do you see this? God has said, so you may say. Amen. Amen. Of course, we know here, he said, I will never, what he said was, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Right? So you may say, because God says you never leave me nor forsake me, I also say this, I will not be afraid of what man will do to me. Amen. So I'm not be afraid of what Goliath is threatening me with. Because God said he's with me. How is it that David knew that? And David confessed it. But Saul's soldiers, who were also Israelites, did not say the same. They were, they were also Israelites. So we are all Christians. We are all children of God. We've all been given a promised land. Amen. Amen. Let's say that here at the World Bank, what God has promised you is this high position in your department, you know, whatever. You are there, you know. But I'm just giving you an example. God says, I'm going to give you this promised land. I'm going to make you a senior vice president or whatever it is that you do. All right? So take what I'm teaching you and fit it into it. All right? So God has said this. So don't be afraid of what man is saying, contrary to what God has said. You believe God and you speak. I will not be afraid of what man is threatening me with. What they are threatening me with. Don't be afraid of their threatenings. And so you pray, God, Father, stretch forth your hand and work miracles, signs and wonders in Jesus' name. Let them know through the name of your holy child, Jesus, that you are Lord and I'm your child. Do you see this? Amen. So you should always have this pattern. God has said, so you may say. If it's sickness, what has God said concerning sickness? I will take sickness away from you. I'm the Lord that heals you. The number of your days I will fulfill. That means Satan cannot kill you. So don't believe that Satan will take you out. And don't believe false prophets who come and tell you, I saw you in a coffin. I saw death at your door. No. Goodness and mercy are following you. Amen. The Lord is with you. He has sent his angels to guard you. That's what the Bible says. Amen. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. God has, you learn, get this today before you go. God has said, so you may say. Now, one more thing. Not just say, but boldly say. 
Do you see it? Verse 6. So that we may boldly say. All right, so always find what God has said. Here it says, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So that we may boldly say. So find what God has said. So you may say. I love this. Learn this today. God is saying, he has said, so you may say. Amen. So from this study, if I was to ask this question, why did God say it to you? What would be the answer? So you may boldly say. Why did God write this to you? So you may boldly say. Why did God say, why did God write this? You will not dash your foot against a stone. So you may boldly say one day when Satan comes to yes. tempt you. That, so Jesus said, it is written. God wrote it for him. Because God knew that one day the devil would tempt him with this. Did you get it today? Yes. So what is Satan planning to tempt you with? God has already said something about it. So you may boldly say, come that day, you may say. The Lord is with me. Promotion comes Amen. from God. Amen. I will enter that position of senior vice president or president or whatever. Healing comes from God. I will not die. I will live. I will fulfill the number of my days. God will fulfill it. Amen. I will live to a good long age. Ripe age. I will fulfill my destiny and my purpose to the glory of God. Amen. So final question that we pray. Why has God said? Why did he say? So you may boldly say. Amen. Hallelujah. That's how the spirit of faith operates. We're going to pray. We're going to believe God to help us possess our promised land, whatever that may be for you in the coming year, to possess it in Jesus' name. Father, we join in faith. I join in faith with your people in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have seen today in your word Amen. that you promised Israel a land flowing with milk and honey. Yes. The two, Joshua and Caleb, those who spoke in faith, believed you entered. Amen. We touch and agree in Jesus' name Jesus that name. by faith we also possess Amen. our land that flows with the milk and honey. I pray God's people to enter the doors, the opportunities that you have set for them. Amen. I pray them into it in Jesus' name. Amen. And I declare that they will be possessors in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You have said, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Amen. So we may boldly say, we are the healed of the Lord. I speak health to God's people. I speak life to them. I speak healing. I speak strength. I speak vitality to them in Jesus' name. Be healed in your body. Be strengthened by the power of God. Be made sound in Jesus' name. May God take you higher and higher. From one degree of glory to a higher degree of glory. From faith to faith by the power of His Spirit in Jesus' name. I pronounce you blessed yes. in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. amen and amen. amen. May you and your house be blessed amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.